everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Amin here and today I am back with another genetic counseling video. If you are new to the profession of genetic counseling or you just heard of it for the first time, this is a great beginner video for you, but I do have a few other, not a few, more. I have a lot of other videos about genetic counseling on my channel, so definitely check them out. Today we are going to be doing a very quick review of the different specialties that genetic counselors might work in or genetic counselors might be involved in. And so of course we'll be talking about the three main specialties today and that's cancer pediatric and prenatal I currently work as a prenatal genetic counselor 90% prenatal like 10% preconception general adult type of um, genetic counseling and if you want to see more of what I do when I look at day-to-day -day life on a week in my life type of thing I do vlog quite a bit as a genetic counselor so subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my content and if you want to hear more about these three specialties keep watching the video okay so like I said I work in prenatal and preconception mostly so I I did have to go back to like my school days my rotation days to figure out what it is people do in other specialties where I work right now we are a general clinic so some of my colleagues are you know cancer focused some are pediatric focused so we do everything there um, but I did kind of have to dig a little bit to figure out you know what did I remember doing from school so we'll start with cancer first so cancer genetic counseling is one of the three main specialties in the profession itself and it has really blown up over the last from what I hear over the last like 10 to 15 15 years um, and that's really with the expansion of genetic testing that's available and the different technologies and the research that has been happening in the field. The most common types of referrals that we see in cancer genetics is really has to do with a personal or family history of cancer and so one of the main common things that I saw when I was a student was a personal history of breast over or ovarian cancer and then a family history of breast and ovarian cancer and so what we normally do is when we get in that referral the first thing we want to do is find out their family history whether it's personal whether it's a family history who else in the family has had cancer how old were they what type of diagnosis did they have um, who else in the family has it and how are they related to you and so once we have all of that information um, you do depending on where you work you see is this person eligible for genetic testing or not if they are currently diagnosed with cancer like a new recent diagnosis or it's a recurrence type of cancer um, some of these results may make a difference for let's say treatment options so if they were to have an hereditary predisposition to cancer so we tested one of these genes these days there's panels of genes so the high-risk genes that a lot of you might might have heard of there's BRCA1 BRCA2 and then there's a whole bunch of other genes that have been you know discovered in the last few years some of them are high risk some of them more moderate risk depending on what the results are somebody might you know make changes to their treatment instead of getting um, a lumpectomy they might get a mastectomy they might get a bilateral mastectomy for prevention purposes and then let's say somebody comes in and they have a family history of cancer but they themselves haven't had cancer yet none of these results will say hundred percent that you will have cancer but they might say okay your chance is increased above the general population and you know significantly a more increased than the average person and so sometimes people will take that information and that might help them you know with their family planning um, in terms of what if they pass this on to their children it might help them in terms of you know trying to prevent the condition from happening or decrease the chance from it to happening again so preventative mastectomies are a thing um, if somebody's at a high risk for ovarian cancer they might you know decide to get their ovaries removed after they're done, they're done childbearing if they wish so there's a lot of different you know aspects that a genetic counselor would be involved in from the pre-test counseling um, this is the traditional model of genetic counseling you know a lot of days clinics do things differently now but pre-test counseling is when you counsel somebody you know these are the different tests that we have available these are different results that might you know come up um, and are you interested in this test or not so really leaving it up to the person to decide and then after the results come back you call it post-test counseling here is your results you know let's talk about it what would this change for you well, how, what can we do going forward how are you going to use these results um are you going to share with your family members are you you know interested do you have good communication with them so all of these different things with cancer there is um you know a whole different set of psychosocial concerns that come along with it so breast and ovarian cancer is like one of the top most common types of referrals another type of referral that we see often enough is for you know family history of colon 
colon or uterine cancer and then we think of something called Lynch syndrome um, so it's similar enough where it's a predisposition syndrome it can lead to different types of cancers or a higher chance for developing these cancers um, so same thing pre-test post-test counseling things like that um, so that's one of the specialties that we see a lot of in genetics is cancer so that was a little bit of a deep dive into the cancer specialty if you ever want to see somebody on my channel like talk a little bit more about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis the cancer genetic counselor let me know when I have obviously lots of people that I can ask if they'd be comfortable ever coming on the channel and doing a little bit of a Q&A the second type of specialty that is one of the main three the top three in genetic counseling is pediatric and so pediatric obviously has to do with children there's a few different common referrals that we see in pediatric genetics. One of them is a child that has autism. That is like a huge thing that even I've come across like as a student and even in our clinic in general. And so the idea is that we know a small percentage of autism is caused by genetic you know differences um, and sometimes these genetic differences can be syndromic so that means it's autism plus some other features and so this can really help a family to you know figure out why did this happen in a child the vast majority of time we never find out why autism happened in a child and so it's probably a different combination of factors but in some cases we are able to pinpoint one specific genetic factor and again so this would be okay why did this happen in this child is there anything else that you know this chance this child could be at a higher risk for and then one of the main things number one is how do i support this child right what resources do we need how can we you know if they have any certain other concerns like how can we deal with those and the second biggest thing is what is the chance for it to happen again like if they were interested in having other children and um, so with the pediatric side of things a lot of times we work very closely with a geneticist who is a physician specialized in genetics and they usually do a physical exam for the child itself to see is there anything else you know maybe different um, so that's the autism side of things another big one that we see in pediatrics is children with developmental delays and birth defects um, and so these are children that don't necessarily have an autism diagnosis but you know with their birth or even after their birth you know things are not how or have not developed the way you would typically expect them to and then we wonder is it because of an, a specific genetic syndrome so again a geneticist would be involved in this you would work very closely with them similar idea there's pre-test counseling you it's really with the parents that you would have this discussion these are the types of genetic tests that we have this is the one that we think would be you know best suited for the situation these are the types of results that we could get are you interested in pursuing this test and then if they are you know after the results come back meeting with them again how can this guide management for this child what does this mean for your future children is this something that happened randomly or by chance and the chance for it to happen again is low or is this something that maybe there's a 50% chance for it to happen again is there anybody else in the family that should have be, that should be tested so there's lots to discuss with that and then of course with pediatrics the last thing that we see frequently enough in the clinic is really newborn consultations so these are newborns that you know the pediatrician or the OB on call whoever it is has noticed something is you know different about this child it could be something that had been diagnosed in the pregnancy so prenatally like maybe there was genetic testing done and we know the child has xyz you know syndrome or there were ultrasound findings in the pregnancy but the parents wanted to wait until a child was born to kind of do these investigations so sometimes there is a newborn consultation that happens again the geneticist is involved in these cases and the counselor as well for a lot of the counseling side of things the psychosocial part of things the pre-test counseling the post-test counseling things like that then lastly of course we have prenatal which is the best totally biased opinion and prenatal there's a lot of information about this on my channel so i won't go into too much detail or i'll refrain myself from talking too much about it but the most common referrals that we see in prenatal are if somebody's had a positive screen in the pregnancy and so that type of screening could be like a first trimester screen a non-invasive prenatal screening or testing type of screen higher chance for basically down syndrome trisomy 21 trisomy 18 trisomy 30 13. these days the NIPT testing can also look for sex chromosome differences so you know monosomy X there can be Kleinfelter there can be triple X there's so many different things out there that can happen in a pregnancy so if somebody screens as a higher risk for that 
they would come to talk to us and we would explain the results to them. What is the chance for this to be true in the pregnancy? What is further testing that could happen in the pregnancy that would give us more of a diagnostic result? Um, what is the outlook of this type of condition? What are the different features? And so, you know, people in most cases do additional testing and then we find out for sure yes or no. If it is yes, then they decide, okay, is this something that I want to continue the pregnancy with or would I, you know, con consider ending the pregnancy? Do I need more time to decide? Do I need more ultrasounds to decide? All of that. Sometimes people come to us because there is an ultrasound abnormality detected either in the first trimester ultrasound that you have around 12 or 13 weeks, the NT scan. Sometimes it can be the anatomy scan that happens around 18 to 20 weeks. If there's a certain birth defect or a you know physical difference that's seen on one of these ultrasounds, depending on what it is, it could be linked to a specific type of genetic syndrome. This is what's on our differential. You know, there is additional testing that we can recommend in some cases that would tell us for sure yes or no about this type of genetic condition so again kind of going down the similar path and other cases sometimes people come to us because they have already had a history a previous pregnancy with some kind of ultrasound abnormality or a chromosome difference or another type of genetic condition or something that's in their family let's say their sister had a pregnancy with certain chromosome condition they have a sibling that has a genetic condition one of their parents has a genetic condition and so we kind of meet with them and talk about the condition a little bit more is there testing that we can offer them is there testing that we would offer the pregnancy or themselves you know what is the outlook for this type of condition most of the time we need extra information we need more records to get that information to get be able to give like an accurate assessment um, but in prenatal that's a lot of what it is and obviously as you can imagine emotions are very high in a pregnancy you know a lot of times things go unexpectedly so there's a lot of you know discussing the psychosocial impacts with people having to decide okay pregnancy management how do we want to move forward and then after all of that is done people always wonder okay what's the chance for it to happen again so having these types of discussions with people so oftentimes i am having multiple meetings with these people sometimes in the same pregnancy sometimes in future pregnancies and so i absolutely love what i do if you want to see more like i said of prenatal genetic counseling kind of what i do in the day-to-day -day or week in the life type of thing subscribe to my channel you can get a lot more information about that if any of these specialties interest you and you want to get somebody else to kind of do a QA, I can ask around let me know in the comments below and I do want to say there are so many different specialties now in genetic counseling these are like the main three the ones that encompass most genetic counselors a lot of people work in industry now which is working with you know different types of genetic testing labs a lot of people work in research people work with neurogenetics cardiology people work with reproductive genetics which is like before pregnancy like with IVF for example you know genetic testing on embryos that kind of thing like I said there are so many different areas a genetic counselor can go into so if you're interested in learning a little bit more definitely subscribe to my channel I hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a huge thumbs up and I hope to see you next time thanks for watching bye